What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Seltzer Time Podcast. It's your boy, Ricky, a.k.a. Dick Chuck, a.k.a. the man behind the can at Seltzer Time Official. Here, as always, with my conversation accomplice, the man with the hunch about what's there, Travis. What is cracking, Fizzle Fiends? Welcome back to another episode of the Seltzer Time Podcast. And as always, we are so glad you've joined us. This week on the show, we are talking to Bill Shaner, formerly of Worcester Magazine, oh, <laughs> now an independent <laughs> freelance writer. Um, we had a super interesting conversation about the state of Worcester, uh, not politics so much as journalism, and what's getting covered, what's not getting covered, and what the future holds. But before we get there, you know what we have to do. Hey, Ricky, how was your week, buddy? What up? Um, my week was good. I have been trying to practice with NHL 20 as much as possible. Um, I'm still really bad. A lot of people, the other day I posted like a self time like with the game. And a lot of people are like, yo, what's your gamer tag? And I'm like, I have no idea if I even have one. I'm not really sure what a gamer tag is. But I'm also nowhere near good enough to play with anybody else. I haven't won a game yet, but I've gotten better. Instead okay. of losing like seven to one, I lose like 11 to six. So <laughs> it's like I'm getting better at scoring goals. I'm getting, I can't stay out of the penalty box. I'm pretty much on a, uh, I'm on penalty kill for a majority of the game. So it's really sad. You feel more comfortable with, with more ice, four skaters and more ice to move around. I mean, it's, it's getting that way. I think I've just gotten to the point where, like, I the only thing – I can either, like, level a dude with a huge hit or when I go to poke check, I trip them. So I get, like, 14 tripping calls a game. It's ridiculous. Patrice Bergeron is always – obviously, I play with the Bruins. Patrice right. Bergeron – his ice time for my team is like unbelievable because he is the center for my like number one penalty kill. So he's on the ice like the entire game, basically. It's kind of sad. I gotta, I gotta get better. But yeah, so I spent uh, a bunch of my time doing that. Um, what else did I do this week? I did we that. Out. We hung out one day. We hung out. We got tested. That was interesting. That was interesting. Um, uh, shout it out was to for making it way What's easier. Up? Shout out UMass for making it way easier than I thought it'd be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 UMass killed it. Um, yeah, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. It was super fast. I think I was in and out in uh, five minutes. You can probably look at our text thread and we can actually see exactly how long I was in there. Oh, Ricky. Ricky kind of like was both smart and silly at the same time. And he didn't <laughs> end up following the signs like Joe and our buddy Joe went. So it was uh, Joe, Ricky, and I. Um, all in separate cars. So Joe and I are texting because I see Joe and I in the, I see Joe in the, there was two queue lines. So he was in the left queue line and I was in the right queue line. And like they were queuing people up before pulling them over in the garage. Um, so I saw Joe and then we're texting you and you're like, what do you mean you guys are waiting in line? I'm, I'm already over here. I'm like, what the hell do you mean you're already over here? And sure yeah. enough, people had got in. So I was late yeah. and also went to the wrong place. It still right. made it in and out before you guys why you're, a pro. Rules. <laughs> you're a pro it's really what it is it's do uh, what i want yeah well i mean clearly i didn't have to do what i needed to because regardless they made it really quick um i was i i can now confirm i wrote on twitter i can now confirm that it tickles i, I my brain would not allow me to understand how it could tickle but like it is but 90 percent the feeling that you get right before you have to sneeze that like weird tickle on the top of your nose with just like a pinch truck on by with just a pinch of um water up the nose that that like burning yeah. water up the nose feeling yeah no That's, it was good it was breezy um what else happened this week for me i'm trying to look at my notes oh that was kind of it uh but big shout out to the kids of tiktok and the k-pop fans for literally making the greatest thing ever happen and for ruining the Trump rally. It's beautiful. It was, it was very enjoyable to follow it on Twitter. And then about two hours before, maybe like 90 minutes before the, the thing popped off, they started disassembling the overflow stage. Really I think it was like 20 minutes before it started because they finally got to the realization that nobody's showing up for this. <laughs> um, yeah. And then again, I loved the tweet from Trump. We're like, where are all the people? Eric Trump's an idiot. Like you, that is so unpresidential. It just is the epitome of why you suck. 
the entire thing was unpresidential. I don't know if you saw the video. I'm sure you saw the videos. And, yeah. Of how him drinking water one-handed and throwing the glass or whining about uh, going up and down the ramp. Small-minded people are amused by small-minded things. I also thought it was hilarious, all the photos that came out of people on their phones and falling asleep in the audience. So good. Um, LP from Run the Jewels and his own cred. Um, framed it beautifully if anybody wants to go follow lp and follow his kind of like the way he took it was from years of experience of having bad shows being a touring musician and he was trying to give donald trump advice on like you're gonna have bad shows the audience isn't gonna feel you're gonna think that you should have sold more tickets it, it was so beautifully just like a parallel or a metaphor really fucking funny so good. LP's no fan. I just want to make sure that everybody understands that. Oh, I'm yeah. Making fun of him. Yeah. Also, uh, just a, from before, Ricky and I both got negative tests, so we're we're we don't have COVID. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're clear. <laughs> Imagine we didn't tell anybody. We're just like, so we got tested. Oh, we just leave that out. Up, like, we just don't tell anybody what the results were. I definitely said in the last episode that we were going to consider getting in the same room again. And then here we are, we're saying we got tested and we're still in separate rooms. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's another thing that happened. Um, Massachusetts is dumb as fuck. We went like the entire country that everywhere that opened up early is now reclosing and their numbers are completely spiking. And then we were like, oh, you know what? Real quick. We were going to do outdoor dining for a little while, like maybe through the summer. But you know what? Let's just uh, let's speed that process up. You guys can go back inside. Nothing matters anymore. And then we'll shut this bitch down in fucking a month and a half. So I'll have plenty of time to play NHL 20. I'm not that worried about it. I'm starting to get really sad because I love this like quarantine lifestyle. But I, I know that like my personal schedule is about to change like literally this week. And I was like, damn, like it's not changing that much. But it's changing enough where like I will be kind of back to like a semi-functioning adult schedule um but then watching the way that massachusetts wants to do stuff i'm pretty sure i'm gonna be back in my uh, vacation lifestyle really quick right after we got that article about how boston and worcester were leading cities for we could potentially yep. rebound fast enough or rebound faster it's the most like government thing ever though like oh wait we're doing good all right let's shoot ourselves right in the kneecap because you know there's six people that are fucking dying to eat inside right now it's like whatever have fun fucking care i'll continue to get takeout i got takeout plenty last week we got it a couple times uh caitlin and john came over and they brought um a birch tree pizza oh yeah this is so goddamn good they do i got lots of blt from birch tree on saturday afternoon it was it was very very good their home fries are awesome too by the way i don't know if you've had them they're good. I had them back when they first came out, like like at the restaurant. And then the other day, I was like, "Yo, I need lobster in some capacity because everybody in the world has a lobster something on their menu." So we were gonna do dead horse for lobster tacos, but I had to pick something up at Worcesterwares. So I was like, "Oh, I haven't had Birch Tree like at all. I don't think since Corona started." Um, so I was like, "I'm gonna, I want to get something from Birch Tree." Like, I, they have a lobster BLT. RB posted it like the day before and I was like dude I need this so I got that and I got an order home fries and they were I was very happy <laughs> I had a great day on Saturday just eating that and then we got Pepe's that night so my spot your, your beautiful taste buds I'm jealous okay. um, my week was about the you know about the same as it normally is I work too much um, we did my in-laws rented a dumpster this past weekend so Sarah and I rented a pickup truck from U-Haul big shout out to the U-Haul on Hammond Street uh, it looks fairly new. I didn't know it was there. And having to pick up a used, not a used vehicle, but a shared vehicle, I was a little skeptical. I definitely like went with gloves on, anticipated wearing my mask through the whole thing. But that place is so freaking spotless. Like it's, it's fairly new, but they keep it so clean. Like girls, the, the women that are checking out stuff are behind sh uh, shields and stuff. And then they have a dude that his job is checking in and checking out. So when I brought it back, I didn't even have to go back inside. He just took the keys, gave me a little once over, and was like, "Yeah, hey, man, you're good." So they made it so easy. It was awesome. Um, we filled a 30-yard dumpster filled with crap. It was so great to purge. Oh my god! I have space in the basement again. That's a fun feeling. 
Nice. A lot of it was from when I redid the bedroom, the flooring upstairs in the spare bedroom. Oh, yeah. I didn't know what to do with that stuff. Like, I can't put yeah. it in, in Worcester trash bags. So, anyway, so it was good to get rid of that stuff. And then um, Saturday, so that was Saturday. Saturday night, Sarah went out with her friend Jen, or our friend Jen, but it doesn't matter. Um, and I sat home and kind of caught up on some Netflix or some YouTube. And I finally watched Dave Chappelle's 846. And oh, it's so one, it was insane to watch the setup, insane to like see people fully masked, sitting two chairs, plenty of space apart. Was that at his house? No, I think it was like the like town gazebo in wherever he lives. It's in Ohio somewhere. It was Ohio, okay. Um it was so insanely powerful. Um Dave Chappelle is he beautifully explains why you both don't want his opinion and want his opinion on what's going on. And like yeah. how we as a civilization don't need to know what the celebrities are saying about George Floyd. Um, but at the same time, you have his beautiful perspective and then bringing in stories like he did of Eric Garner and bringing in the story of, um, oh my God, the guy down in Texas, Dorner, Chris Dorner. Um, shit that I absolutely knew about when it was released, but again, didn't take the time to read the full story. And there's a lot of shit that I'm like, it's like Black Wall Street. I, I spent some time reading up on Black Wall Street this week and, and, and like really learning about some of the shit. And I don't know, I can't truly say whether or not we were just never taught it in school and like in history class, or if, it, if I just missed it, you know what I mean? But like, there's so much true American history that I've been kind of digging my teeth into and learning about shit that I feel like I didn't know about, if I should have known about. And if it was as easily accessible to all students, we would be in a way different place now. Like it's yep. far more than just totally. the Birmingham bus boycotts. Yep, totally agree. So, that's Oops. what I can say about that. Watch 846, watch 90s. Yeah, it's dope. I I, lo I liked it a lot. I mean, I'm a big Chappelle fan anyway. Like, of course, he's like said some some dumb shit in the past. Like, he's a comedian. Not that that's like justifying it, but like every literally every comedian has. You say they haven't, you're full of shit. But like, you know what I mean? Like, this it happens all the time. But I thought it was impressive the way that a they like did this so fast and got it out um, two days after they uh, filmed it or whatever, and it was still like. I mean, obviously it was like, st it's still going on, but I mean, like just to get it out and be that topical and that, that fast with the turnaround, I thought was amazing. Um, I also, you go into something with Dave Chappelle thinking that it's going to be funny. Like even a, 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 a hard subject like that, you're like, okay, like he's going to make some jokes about it. Like, you know, you kind of go into it with a different mindset and then, when it wasn't funny at all, like, you know, min minus a couple chuckles here and there, but like, I think that was what was so powerful about it was you, you're getting, you know, real talk from a person who lives that life and, ex and you know, has experienced plenty of things like that. Um, but he was wildly passionate. And I think you, if you, I think the, him doing that was really, really, really important because you're waiting for the, the punchline but there wasn't a punchline. And I think that's what kept everybody so focused on it. And it wasn't overdone. It wasn't, it was real as fuck. Like was, that was a really very, very impressive thing. It felt so. like he was talking to me directly. Like I had an opportunity to sit with Dave Chappelle in a room and he expressed to me the way he felt about what was going on. And I think yeah. that's why it was so powerful. So, that was great. Yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys the interview, have, yes, if you haven't been paying attention to what happened here in Worcester this week, um, we had an opportunity to bring on Bill Shaner. Bill Shaner has been a reporter for Worcester Magazine for a few years. Um, I've talked about him on this show. I've always appreciated his perspective. He's a little brazen or a little grumpy at times, depending on his perspectives. But again, it's always a needed perspective and definitely something worth reading. And he quit his job this week. So, uh, no, yeah. 
<laughs> Why? I just go back to work ever again. <laughs> so, um, as an opportunity to learn about kind of what happened, learn about what's next for Bill, and talk about just the current state of media, we had him on the show and just had a fantastic conversation. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. This week on the show, we have Bill Shaner, formerly of Worcester Magazine, now an independent freelance writer for his own blog or his own newsletter. That's a better way to describe it. Uh, Bill, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Uh, I dig the podcast a lot. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm. I, I, I quit my job and now I have a newsletter and I'm trying to get people to pay me directly to write said newsletter about Worcester. And um, that is really the whole story. If you sign up and get my newsletter, you'll get my newsletter and you can pay for it if you want to. And uh, it is definitely a risky move. Uh, could end up being stupid, really stupid. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know, it's been going pretty sick. And I'm like super excited to write about Worcester again because honestly for the, for the last like year or so of Worcester Mag after it got bought by Gatehouse Media um, and was systematically destroyed um, on purpose it seemed like um, yeah it, it, it got really it got really hard to write for that company <laughs> like just yeah. getting the motivation to like be like okay I have to get a story and like you know just kind of mailing it in coasting um, was a it was a wear on my soul <laughs> so I'm excited <laughs> to get back yeah. So for any of um, listeners that are unfamiliar with Bill Shanner, which I find surprising because I've definitely referenced him many times before. I even went out and I made sure that I bought him a coffee early on in Seltzer Times Life because I was yeah. using so much of his content on our show. Like I would I would read Wisteria every week because I, I truly appreciated your take, your perspective. You kind of were biting. You were always very critical, but like fair. Right. Um, and I think like what we discussed, Worcester Magazine in its truest form, like that was the power of that publication was that it was yeah. fair on balance and actually hit the culture. Right, right. It was, it was real. And that, that, that's why Worcester Magazine started in the 80s. It was a bunch of reporters. I think it was two reporters from the Telegram that just kind of like defected. And we're like, oh, you know what? We can do this so much cooler and better and in a, like a way more Worcester way and like actually reflect the... The, what the community wants and, and, and wants to hear about. And that's how they started it. And that's like how a lot of all weekly papers start. Um, and uh, I wrote about that in my sort of like goodbye letter. That was the first post of my, my newsletter is that, you know, like I am starting this newsletter really in the same spirit as the people who started Worcester magazine back in the eighties. It's like, this is, this is sort of the way that like alternative independent media exists uh in, in 2020 it's on um it's on patreon substack you know podcasts uh that like the traditional media outlets like worcester magazine are just getting completely reamed by you know a guy on a yacht who's like oh if i lay off this many people i might be able to buy another yacht you know like this it, there's there's no uh, there, there's no real regard for the institutions themselves. They're owned by people who are sort of managing the decline, basically. Like they're they're based. What they're essentially doing is they're they're reporting layoffs as profit to their shareholders. And this is happening not just in local papers, not just Worcester Magazine, but like big, uh, like uh, big outlets like BuzzFeed and, and like all the national publications too. Like uh, New York media scene is getting hit by rashes of layoffs all the time. And it's just getting increasingly hard to get paid to write. But this platform I'm using called Substack, it's like a new thing that um, some really cool writers like Luke O'Neill in Boston, uh, Matt Taibbi, uh, they're, they're just publishing their work directly on this newsletter that you can also read like a blog. And there's an option to be a monthly subscriber. So they're just getting paid directly by the, the people that read them. And uh, it's so I, I figured I might be able to, to give that a shot and, and see if that, that template could work in Worcester because I, I wasn't making a ton of money at Worcester Magazine. It, it wouldn't take that many subscribers to get me there. So, uh, like, figure if I just, you know, if I do it and it works, sick. If I do it and it completely flops, 
well, I was at the end of my journalism rope anyway, so, and I, I like, couldn't take it anymore. So <laughs> it was kind of like, a, well, I, I'll give it one more shot to continue being a writer. And if, if this actually works, then sick. Uh, if not, I'll find a new career. So um, that was uh, that was sort of the impetus. And I I, I, uh, I plan on writing like uh, four or five times a week. Um, and I'm going to oh. kind of develop style as I go along. But um, I'm going to keep it pretty much in the, the voice that I was uh, creating with Wisteria every week at my, my, uh, my years at Worcester Magazine. Yeah. That's so, and I get to criticize the ownership company of Worcester Magazine and the Telegram now with a- absolutely no restrictions. And like, that's, <laughs> that's a huge story. That's a huge story. Brad Patrician at the Telegram just came out with like one of the first like genuinely good real pieces of journalism I've read in a long time. I don't know if you guys saw that. He, um, he, he has a whole big cover story on like this lawsuit that he's has against the Worcester police department to get records uh, of police misconduct. And they're like not releasing it at all. And it's like, like, yo, like that, that stuff can still happen, but it's like against all odds, you know, like the, the fact that Brad could still pull that off, because that takes serious effort. It takes serious work. And he's like, he's in a newsroom that's like probably an eighth of the size that it should be to, to fill a paper like the Telegram. So uh, I don't know. It, it's just like the, the model is just not working and it's being destroyed on purpose. So we got to start thinking about new ways to, to have reporters in Worcester. Because I could have just been like, okay, I'll get a job at an insurance company know yeah just not not just gave up being a reporter and a a columnist in Worcester um and that would have been way easier to do you know like the the, a way better path and a way less stupid path but I'm stupid so uh (laughs) (laughs) I feel you I mean 100 percent. I quit my stupid corporate job to be a freelance graphic designer and it's taken me years to get to the point where I feel like I'm comfortable so yeah right stupid but I give you 110% credit to fucking just try it. And it's like, yeah, right, right. Fuck it. The worst thing that can happen is you lose a year of your life and you have to go get a normal job. Yeah, right. Like, it's not, it's not hard to find, it's not really hard to find work. And I still have another job. I work in a kitchen. So, like, I won't die in the street if this doesn't work out. I'll be fine. Um, And it is actually working out, like, really well. Like, uh, I am up to, uh, just under 300 subscribers now, um, and I need I so I'm I'm wicked stupid about business and all of this stuff. Uh, I don't I don't really know how anything works at all. Um, and every every time I do taxes, even with like a normal paycheck, I get so confused. So I I don't I don't know like how much money I'm actually making because like are they, is this gonna get taxed? I don't know I don't know, uh, but. At simple math, if I get to 400-ish subscribers, uh, that's my salary at Worcester Magazine after taxes. So, like, I'm, um, you know, like, it's only been a couple days. So, if I can just maintain this and, like, slowly pick up more of a following, then I can sustain myself on this and just keep doing it for as long as people continue to pay me to do it, which is, like, kind of sick. It's super freeing. I can... uh just write about whatever I want to and you know like like directly uh directly to the people who want to read my work it's like it's such a tight situation it's so much better than going through a publication um yeah so um yeah the the launch on on Friday went really well um I think that anytime you performatively quit a job you're gonna get attention uh so (laughs) <laughs> well, I think it's. Also, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about Western Magazine, but knowing that like you were pretty much the only person that I recognized, that I think that I knew that still worked there. Yeah. So like you leaving that was such a huge. Like I was in one room reading your story, and I walked yeah. into our office, and my girlfriend was like, "Did you read Bill's thing?" And I was like, "I literally was just coming in to show you that," and it was like <laughs> four minutes after you popped it up because it was just yeah, yeah. whole city started sharing it and sharing it and sharing it. Yeah. So I think it's good indicator into uh you know how how important you are as a voice in the city but also going forward like even though you're are you're only a, you know 100 followers or 100 subscribers away 
I can easily see you hitting that mark in like two weeks. Once you start putting out consistent work on that side, people start posting yeah. it. Right. I haven't even demonstrated what I'm going to do yet. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I've written like, I've written two posts. Um, and I'm going to take it super serious. Like I'm going to try really hard to make it work. Cause it's like, I'm out in the woods now, you know, like I, I need, this to work so yeah. i'm gonna make it work and it's not like i've been writing about worcester every day for three years it's not like i'm i'm not up to the challenge or whatever but now it's like i get to like really craft my own style and how i'm gonna do this and i am so excited about it um and i think that that's the thing is that everyone in worcester loves worcester magazine but they they love like I don't be careful about how I say this, but they love the idea of Worcester Magazine, right? Yeah. That, that it exists. You know, sometimes it just, it, it, it could be cooler than it is. Uh, it could be a better Alt Weekly than it is. And the pe that's no knock at all against anybody working there. And I really do like the people that work there. And against all odds, they're still managing to put out really, really good work. But it's just been ripped to shreds. Like when they laid off uh, Walter and, and Josh, Walter Bird and Josh Leifert on the same day yeah. and left me to put out the paper by myself for six fucking weeks. Like I just had to figure it out. Like what the, f like it was so mind bogglingly frustrating to just deal with this company that is obviously owning the paper in bad faith and destroying it on purpose. Right. And yeah. Now they have like a better situation figured out where Victor Infante, the art center of the Telegram, who uh, I love to death, is like kind of like the point person organizing everything that goes into the paper. And um, and he's doing he's doing way, 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 way more work than he should be doing. Oh, my God. Because that's not even his only job. He's like the editor of the Worcester magazine and the art center at the Telegram and yada, yada, blah, 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 blah. He's doing the work of like six people. And... Oh getting paid the salary of one yeah. yes while getting paid the salary of one right right because like, that's what happens when someone gets laid off is that you know the work doesn't go away it just, yeah, gets, it just gets thrown on somebody else's yeah. right it really should be illegal what these companies are doing to to publications around the country but it isn't because we live in a hell world and it's <laughs> <laughs> so again i mean that's always been the biggest thing i've my gripe about the Worcester magazine or even any of those alt presses, any of the advocates or whatever. Like, I love the idea that this paper is free, right? And then it gets distributed out and it has way accessible that way. But because yeah. it's free, you need all these advertisers and print media isn't of it. It's fucking in its truest form is goddamn expensive. And especially yeah. if you're in full color and you're doing it at a wide audience. And I know how much fucking waste like, actually, yeah. I don't fully know, but I have an estimate on how much waste is seen every issue. Yeah. Uh, and then how the fuck do you negate that, but still maintain excess? And yeah. I think essentially what you're doing is the, the future is, is these papers are all going to go online. They're all going to get distributed to a, a digital media. And much like our cable companies are now getting to the fact where everybody's their own fucking streaming service. And we as consumers get to only put our money in the you know back the people we want to support that's the fucking way it should be and that way the people that are right. good content for the people are the ones that are actually getting fucking supported and they're getting progressed yeah yeah it's it's definitely uh i'm definitely super optimistic that this is like a, a sustainable thing because um so many people in worcester just like they they want like worcester news and they want yeah. worcester coverage and they're so unhappy with i mean like just just even opening a story on telegram.com is fucking annoying it sucks it sucks to read and it's just like they're just like there's no money to be made at all in digital advertising right so all the newspapers in the world are doing the paywall model and gatehouse media has the absolute worst template for a paywall thing it's like you click it you open it you get two like paragraphs down into a story and then it's like uh, blah, uh, support local journalism and you get the paywall thing and then you're like ah oh, okay i gotta open a private window now copy and paste it in and read the rest of it it's like it, it's just it's just whack and, yeah it's and the fact that we all know how to get around it also shows that's inefficiency yeah 
it's so easy. I have a, I have like, I, I do it like just on keyboard shortcuts, like instantly, just like, like it takes me two seconds now. Cause I have to do it all the time. I didn't even, even when I worked for the telegram, I, I like just never bothered to get a, a company subscription. So I was just like, eh, I'll just keep opening the private one. <laughs> <laughs> have um, you, has anybody reached out to you about advertising so far? No, and I, I'm not going to concern myself with that either. Uh, okay. I just, I don't even want to bother. I don't want, I don't want to be beholden to any sort of advertiser. Um, if someone wants to give me money, they can buy a subscription. You know, I, okay. I don't need to advertise. I don't think that that's even a, a, a way, a viable way to make money uh, with this platform anyway. Um, okay. I think that it's, it should just be um, subscription based. And um, I do agree that it kind of changes the focus slightly when you bring in advertiser money to something yeah, well, that needs to be. Yeah, well, for, for me, for, for what I'm doing, which is being like sort of like a, um, uh, just like an insufferable asshole to people in power in the city, it's like no one's going to want to advertise with that anyway, you know? Um, and yeah, I'm not, I'm not wholly concerned but like there there's just so many things wrong with Worcester that Worcester people love to see somebody get angry about you know like the, it's just like it's it's a very frustrating city in, in, in politically I mean I love Worcester yeah. Death. like yeah I love living here but like politically it's a very frustrating city uh I, what was the thought I had I think I tuned it I was like uh, we want to talk about like Worcester being the heart of the Commonwealth, but Worcester is a city that continually punishes you for caring. Yeah, this is like <laughs> beat <you> down. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, you just get if you care if you care and you try to get politically involved in Worcester, you just get you just get punished like all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. I think that this is the way of the future, and I would love to see more writers like try to do this and and go off and see if there's actually like a market which i in in the tiniest way possible i'm a little bit demonstrating that there's a, a will for this and that there's a market for this and that you could possibly make a, a little bit of a living off of this um and obviously i'm, I'm gonna try to freelance right now for for bigger publications and stuff um like there's a there's a story to be written about the way that uh, Gatehouse destroyed Worcester Magazine, for sure, that a, a bigger publication would be into. And also the, the ballpark is like just endless, 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 endless fodder for, for digging and for talking about the way that city politics works. Um, it's, an, it's actually an exciting time to be following city po politics, honestly. Yes, because this whole defund defund the police movement, like so much of the so much of Black Lives Matter, uh, and uh, this whole movement is focused on municipal government. It's not focused yeah. on like Trump. Right? It's focused on specific police departments and the in the way that you know city halls operate and how they fund their police department and like the police practices and policies. And it's like that's like my wheelhouse that's like i've been i've been doing that for years now and to see so many people like get interested in it and to see the way that like they could actually apply pressure to a a, a city hall to to get them to think differently about the way they do things is like it's really really cool to see and um I, i'm excited i'm super excited to just like be able to take the gloves off because that's why i quit i was trying to write about the defund the police um, and uh, all of this stuff going on with the Worcester Police Department right now and my columns and they kept getting spiked and the reason for it wasn't like as nefarious as it's like we don't want this in the paper right it yeah. was more that I had written a supposedly objective news story about the defund WPD movement right so I couldn't then write about it in an opinionated way in my columns Okay. uh per per the rules of the of the the, the telegram like that that's like an old school journalist thing it's like we what if you if you if you publish your bias then you're biased and people won't trust what you read and like that's bullshit yeah it's like everyone is biased well yeah everyone has biases and people are way more likely to trust you if you're upfront 
about your biases. Like, 100%. I, I wrote in my Goodbye Letter to Western Magazine, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm biased. I'm biased against racists, biased yeah. against authoritarian, grifters, and people who don't give a shit. You know, like, like I have biases and I make them clear. And I think that that's, that's way better way to lend yourself credibility than to like try to believe that you could ever be objective about something. Like you got to be fair. You can't like yeah. make a bad faith argument. You can't like, um, I don't know, like willfully manipulate a story to make it fit your worldview. But you you can't be objective. It's impossible to be a hundred percent objective. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do it. You're like reporters are just faking it. Like you have they're to just be like this robot of a person to not yeah have exactly feelings. Yeah, every single decision you make when you're doing a story, like who you reach out to interview, even why you're doing the story in the first place, are just it's soaked with bias the entire time you're working on a story. So when it comes out, all of that is in there. It's like you can't you can't be objective. It doesn't it doesn't exist. Um, so and I don't have to. Sorry. Yeah. Now you make your own rules. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't have to fake it. I, my my most recent post, the the headline is "Independent Review My Ass." I can just say whatever <laughs> I want, you know, like sick. Um, and I think that like that's what that's what people wanted out of Worcester Magazine. I think is like something like more real and personal and like like really like Worcester, you know. Yeah. And um, I'm I'm so thankful that I got to to work there and that uh, Josh hooked it up with a job and I got to like really take over that Wisteria column and make it my own. Um, Life for job. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, awesome. Lifer, okay, I'll tell I'll tell the story because they're both laid off now. Who cares, right? <laughs> like like Lifeford was like, um, I was there was an opening for the reporter position there and, and me and Lifeford are friends. And Lifeford basically bullied Walter in hiring me. Like he was like, uh, if you don't hire this kid, I'm gonna quit or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> he was like, You have to hire this kid. <laughs> Because they always butted heads like really bad. Uh, and really? I did with it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Walter is a one of a kind person. I, I like him a lot. Uh, that's all. He's a, he's a one of a kind. He's a special person. Walter Bird is yeah. a special person. Yeah, that's, I'll leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, yeah, that's how I, that's how I got that job. And I'm really thankful that um, I was able to do. And we did some really cool stuff. Like when the, um, when the when the city demolished Warside, we like blew that. We made that impossible for them to ignore, and yeah. it turned into a whole big thing. And they're still they're still working to to make it right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, what other cool things did we do? Did you uh, the Warside the Warside story that came out before? Was that after Gatehouse bought you guys, or was it before? Before. It was before. Okay. Two years. Because okay. I was going to say, was there any, like, did anybody, like, above you try to, like, you know, kind of, like, keep you guys from pushing it as hard as you did? No, 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 no. That was before. That was before. That was when Walter was our only boss in any, in any significant way. Okay. Um, and he was just like, yeah, go for it. Yeah, that's awesome. Cause he, he, yeah, because Walter is a very, like, give him hell kind of guy. Um, yeah. So that was sick. Yeah, that was, uh, that was really cool. Oh, and the time we went. We toured with High Command for two, for two nights of their cool. uh, tour and reported on it. <laughs> <laughs> you you and Josh went on tour with them. Yeah, I was a photographer. From what <laughs> you remember, awful pictures. I'm so bad at photography, but I was like, yeah, I'll be the photographer. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I took one. That bad one bad. I mean, you're better video, I guess. I took. I took one picture that was good and it ended up on the cover and it's actually a pretty sick cover. Um, and that's all I did the entire weekend. I just took that's that all. one picture and the rest of the time I was just partying. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Lifeford, I looked at, I don't know if I want to put Lifeford on blast like this. Okay. No, no, I, I will. I looked at his notebook and I was like, this isn't even English, dude. Like, <laughs> what, what did you write? <laughs> But he's he's still got a really good story out of it. Like I love that story to death. So he 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 has his own methods. <laughs> but it, it was 
<laughs> oh, dude, his Lightford files was that and Wisteria. Oh, was, like, I miss the Lightford files so much. They're so good. Oh yeah, Lightford is. I love him. He's one of my favorite writers, honestly. Like of any writer. Yeah. He has if I make enough, if, if I'm making enough really money off of this stuff, if I'm making enough money off of this Substack, I haven't talked to him about this, so maybe he'll find out this way. I'm definitely gonna just like try to get him to write for me and like pay yeah. him to play through Venmo. Um, which is also an exciting thing I can do. If I make enough to like cover myself, then I can just start paying people to write on my platform, you know, like yeah. just be like, Hey, I'll Venmo you like a hundred bucks. Can you write like 500 words or something like that? You know, like super casual, super easy. Um, you know, take the, take the workload off and, um, yeah, it'd be awesome to be able to give Worcester people a, a platform um, to publish stuff that without any sort of filter or whatever. Um, I mean, there's clearly a key for that style of publication right now. Like there's yeah. a hole to fill. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And I could branch it off to, so like I would love to, to get more like arts and entertainment stuff into it and like features and like do more of that kind of stuff because there's so much cool stuff going on uh in in Worcester all the time that I would love to cover but that's just like not my wheelhouse sure that's yeah. not where my that's like like I know what my friends are doing but I don't outside of that I don't know what like anyone's doing so um it would be nice to have uh to have somebody else be able to pick that up um I agree that there's definitely, there's not like one good source for finding local music and like finding out who's making good music in the city. No, no not at all. No, not at all. And I, I don't envision my platform ever being that place, but sure, I will sure. write those stories when, when, I, when I feel like it, it's necessary. But no, that is definitely like, a, like there needs to be like a Boston hassle or something for, for Worcester. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. Boston Hassle. That's a great fucking book. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Boston Hassle or something like that. Austin Compass or I don't, is that, is that a thing? I don't, they call it. I don't remember it. Yeah. No, yeah, no. Boston, Boston Hassle. That, that would be great. Um, and like somebody would have to, to run with that. That's, I don't think I'm, I'm really equipped to be that person, but. Um, Respect. Like, I guess I'm more manifesting somebody, it. Hopefully one of our listeners gets inspired. And then I yeah. have a resource. That's really all I yeah. want. I want somebody like, to make it easy for me. Yes, exactly. And I would I would gladly spend five dollars a month to support somebody doing that. Like okay. the, happily. Because I spend five dollars a month on a lot dumber stuff than that all the time. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like that's the that's sort of like the, the the pitch that I'm workshopping here is like, what's the dumbest thing you spent five bucks on? And is this any less dumb than that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I like a, I'm a marketing genius. <laughs> it's, it's all up to me. <laughs> Dude, it, it worked on me. Literally by the time yeah. I was done reading, I was like, credit card's out. It's coming straight to my inbox. Like, this is exactly, yes. I don't even have to go look for it. Like, you're just going to send it directly to my phone, basically. Like, yeah, right. Perfect. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Right too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I had actually a couple people and I feel like I should return this money. Then. That I, so I set the absolute ridiculous $420 a year uh, <laughs> thing. And I, a couple people bought that one. Yeah. Did they really? Yeah. And I need to send them, I'm going to send them personal thank you emails for sure. Um, yeah. Cause I, I just said it cause it was like, it's a, an, an option it gave you. Right. So to like set like a, like a founding member, high contributing price, and I was set it at 420 because that's the funny number. Yeah, it's the funny number, and then the yearly subscription is the funny sex number. Um, I had to go with the funny. <laughs> so many people went with the funny sex number because it's like nine more dollars than you would pay if, if you bought monthly. So yeah. it's like, yeah, why not? Why not go with the? Why not go with the funny number? Um, that's what I was yeah. reading in your comments. Somebody pointed it out and somebody was like, maybe just imagine that we don't care about savings. And that person was like, well, that's fine. I'm going to save my $9. I'm like, all right, you just don't care. Yeah, how about with that nine bucks, bro? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I know. I was like, it was like that guy totally missed the point. He was like, shouldn't a yearly membership be significantly cheaper than a monthly membership to encourage people to buy it? 
I was like, nope. yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, <laughs> if we were gatehouse media, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, was, you know, you, you got me, buddy. You got me, dude. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think that, uh, I think this is going to go really well. I can't wait to see uh, how people respond to it. Um, and I was, and if I get sued or something, that's, that's actually one thing I'm super nervous about. Uh, so I was that, about to ask, are you going to make, like, are you taking like a journalistic stance on this? I mean, you must have to, to a certain degree, like yeah. how much is it? Yeah. Affect you? So I could, uh, the, the company Substack w w will not, protect me i honestly have to talk to a lawyer about this um because they are not my employer you know yeah i actually have a lot of the these sort of back-end questions that i haven't figured out at all uh <laughs> which is because i'm a big stupid idiot uh but like <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so if i say something libelous or slanderous or if somebody feels that I did enough to file a lawsuit, it's going to be directly against me. Um, I pretty sure. So you would have that, to set up Worcester sucks and I love it as an LLC. You would. Have, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You would have to and incorporate then I could it. bankrupt my newsletter. At this point. <laughs> I probably would. Oh my God. Oh, I'm so happy I came on the podcast for this excellent legal advice. <laughs> I don't mean legal advice. I've just set up, I literally just did this for my design company because yeah, yeah, yeah. To get to that point where like the, 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 not libel, but the, um, the amount of pressure that basically if we got sued, they would, we were yeah. a joint venture. So they would sue my pockets, but now that we're an LLC, they can only take the company's assets. There's a right. Big okay. Yeah. No, I wasn't planning on you. That makes perfect sense. I have to do that. That's like, it's, uh, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, we're paying a business manager now, but see, to all your questions about attorneys and, and taxes and shit, these were all things that I just, I don't, I'm a dumb idiot too. And I don't, I don't want to know about, I, I'm, I'm a business person, but I don't think about this shit. So now I just, yeah. I'd help me do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I hope I get there. I also need a copy editor. Oh my God. Typos are so stressful when it's just <laughs> on you. I like I had, tweet. I, 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 in, in my second post and you can't change it. It's a newsletter, right? So once it's in someone's inbox, it's not going to change. Like, yeah. so it has to go out clean and perfect. And I had the dumbest typo in my second one. It was like, it was like peak behind the curtain, but I, I put peak as in mountain instead of peak as in peak peekaboo. And like, I caught it like a half hour later and I was just like, Oh, fuck. <laughs> I was like, that's such a stupid thing. And it was in the first paragraph. Like it was right up at the top. Yeah. So I, I think I should start, I should start shelling out money for a, a copy editor if I'm like a, a volunteer. Um, Get an intern. Got stupid stuff like that. Give yeah, an intern. Oh my God. I'll have like interns like in Steve Zissou. Uh, <laughs> Life Aquatic. The interns that get eaten by sharks and shot by pirates. <laughs> yeah. By internet trolls. Yeah, yeah. I just I just throw them under the bus. <laughs> like when, <laughs> when the trolls come and attack me, I just throw them like, oh, you you should pick on my intern. They are they're way they're more likely to get mad than me. You should yeah. pick on my intern. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of And I love it. I also have free reign to just dump on the trolls and like just like fuck with them, which I honestly love to do. It, it, it's it's the the you must be seeing it already. It brings me great joy. Like uh fucking uh I'm sorry I'm swearing so much. Um You're, it's can, fine. Okay, sorry. Uh but it, you, you know, Aiden Kirtin, Turtle Boy, um he he wrote a whole post trying to like say that I got fired because that's the only way to spin that story that makes him the center of it, which he's a narcissist, a weirdo, uh, and that's what he does to people. And I just retweeted it and I said, "Thanks for the free exposure, you massive dipshit!" <laughs> like I'm starting something that I need people to know about, and you write a whole story about it. Like, okay, thank you. <laughs> this, doesn't, yeah. this doesn't help you at all, uh, and it helps me a lot. So thanks, bud. You did, yeah. you did a really good job taking me down. You definitely won. Big bad. <laughs> yeah, right. Fuck yeah, so now I, just get to, now I just get to, like, really lay into it. And, like, because, man, like, that, that dude's been such, like, a awful 
stain, like just a <laughs> like a a piece, uh, like a hot turd on the concrete of Worcester for so long, and like we're we're just starting to get to the point now where people don't really know or care about him because yeah. he's had trouble staying on Facebook and stuff. Um, so like he's sort of like out of people's out of sight out of mind kind of thing but he's still there and he still has like this weird like mini little proto-fascist audience um like people who just want to see other people in pain and like yeah, it's like uh, they audibly yeah. have. ricky and i were talking about it right before you joined us is that at worcester wears we've had people come in being like why do you support turtle boy and we're like yeah you have the wrong idea here we have this yeah. statue we have the burnside fountain statue which was at yeah. turtle boy long before that hateful fucking idiot came in and tried to abscond the name and retake the brain. Yeah. What the it's, fuck it's does that like the, Probably the, the best. Yeah. Oh, I know. Jesus. Yeah. So it's like, like in, in, a, in, a, in a perfect and just future society, that statue just is just funny, you know? Yeah. It doesn't have the, the connotation of, uh, of that... Yeah, he becomes so irrelevant that nobody even knows about him. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just he just fades into the dustbin of history, uh, and we get to just have our our sick statue of bestiality. Uh, <laughs> Love and admiration. Nothing more. Pedo bestiality. Yeah. Right. <laughs> our our cool our cool pedo pedo statue. Um. One of the dumbest and funniest things I've ever done in my life, and I was cracking up about it for a long time. And this is when I was like really, really, really done with Worcester Magazine and like kind of being like a little kid, like lashing out, seeing what I could get away with. Is I set, I, I went and I sat on the Turtle Boy statue and I put my finger in the turtle's mouth because you know how the turtle's like either in pain or like moaning. Yeah. And you can't really tell which. And I took a picture of it, like a selfie, and I posted, I made that my official work. Uh, headshot. <laughs> Did it get published? <laughs> I made that my official work headshot and like my Twitter profile picture and stuff. Um, <laughs> and and I, I didn't get fired for that. Um, so I was like, okay, what else? What else can I do? And then eventually yeah. just got to the point where it's like, I, I like the way that I think about what journalism should be and the way that the Telegram thinks about what journalism should be are just so out of line that I got to I got to move on I got to try to do my own thing. Um you learned a lot so, of respect from me the night of the first protest, the Monday night protest where you and I talked and you straight up told me that you, you broke your foot the night before in Boston and you weren't sure if you were going to make it. And then I see you hobbling down with the fucking with the protest, them walking, and then you were still fucking out there after I left and I'm watching your live feeds, your videos and like you the the uh, Mass, that kid had his video Mass on. Live. Yeah, yeah, Tom. Um, yeah, yeah there was another reporter that provided so And then Sam Bishop's. Uh, yeah, right, right. That provided so much more context than anything else I was able to find in any actual news outlet. Yeah, and I've talked to, I've talked to everyone that was there. And we sort of like pieced together, like I was there, like Tom was there before I was there. And then Sam was there sort of the whole time. And we've all been talking like, man, what the, what the police said happened and what we saw. It's not so much that the, anything that they say is an outright lie, but there is a lot of lying by omission. Like there's a lot of stuff that didn't make it in, um, which is, you know, I mean, that, that's another thing. And this is the thing that a lot of people have been talking about in the, in the wake of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and all this is like, why is the police report the official report? You know, why is this the working document for everything that comes after it? Why do we in journalism just say something happened and then put a little comma police said at the end and then that's just fact, you know? Yeah. So it, it's a really, it's a really, really good thing to interrogate in like, having having first hand accounts of this like i saw three young black girls get shoved in the back by like six foot cop with a baton while they were just force marching people down the street going like move move move, move back and move yeah back. Move. yeah exactly yeah That's, i saw from your video it's the only way i knew that happened yeah yeah and they were pushing them towards nowhere in particular 
for an undisclosed reason. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so it's, it's like, I don't know. Uh, the, that, that was a really sort of illuminating moment for me, especially seeing the way that the city council and the, the city manager rallied behind them and they like praised the officers for their like tremendous restraint. And that, I think I wrote, that actually did make it into a column. I wrote like that, like sort of was like a heartbreaking moment to be like, you're going to call that tremendous restraint? Like, really? Yeah. Really? Like that we've, all seen not, the, we've all seen the videos. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was not tremendous restraint. That is not what that looks like. You know, you had you had twenty rowdy kids. What's the what's the worst that they did? They lit a bush on fire. Okay. The kid on top of Pennywise with the Molotovs. He was the real. He was the only one that was truly, truly dangerous. But he didn't throw a single one. They talked him down before he. Yeah, right? yeah and he wasn't even part of the group. No, he, he was, was his like, own fucking madman. He was just he was just his own little like free radical. He wasn't what the cops were focused on, and I didn't see that kid. I, I don't know. Well, I, I, I wasn't there for the whole time. I can't say for a fact what did or didn't happen, but I didn't see that kid. I didn't see anybody talking that kid off the roof or anything. What I saw were like 20, 30 kids holding signs, chanting, while the police like just were in like a, a solid black line of like cops and riot gear. Um, shoving them down the street uh and i don't like wh why you know why and so yeah that was that was pretty uh, that was pretty illuminating moment it, it reminds me of this meme that i can't like i can't get it out of my head but it's like you know the, the meme where the guy's slapping a sticker Lips tape on, oh. uh, on the water yeah. on the water pouring out and it's like police and then his hand says police brutality and the water coming out says police brutality and the sticker says police brutality it's like all right you know how we're gonna you know how we're gonna fix this uh this we know how we're gonna uh de-escalate this this protest of uh police officers being violent let's be violent let's be violent yeah, let's through them. Them. i think that that's probably the best way that's that's definitely what we're gonna do yeah Let's be violent and intimidating and scary, so that uh, so that these protesters know that we're really getting the message uh, that uh, we're violent, intimidating, and scary. Yeah, yeah. In Boston, it was really bad too. Um, yeah, it's ugly. I don't know. And that's the thing is like that's why I really felt like I had to had to quit and go my own way with this because there is just so much there to dig into and to interrogate and like, I want to do it in a style that just the telegram will, will not allow me to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to continue to, to really dig on the police department and, and support other people who are doing that and like really sort of um, make sure that this whole like great civil uprising doesn't go to waste you know like we need to keep the pressure on and there's a lot of really really good people in in Worcester doing that and this whole defund the the WPD movement is like really inspiring to see like just how many people they're getting rallied around this and like actually caring about City Hall and like actually trying to make a difference so um, yeah yeah and now I get to just come out and say I'm in those people's corner like I I am the I'm coming from the perspective of this is a good thing you know yeah yeah um it, we've said yeah, that I mean, before. Go ahead, Ricky. I, I wish that I like. I mean, I'm I'm really happy that I'm so like hyper focused on it right now. I'm just bummed that I didn't get hyper focused on it before. Yeah, it's like I, it's annoying, especially after last week watching the city council meeting. I've never watched one before because it's like got to be the most boring fucking thing in the world. But yes. finally, everybody I know is like, dude, you're gonna watch this, right? I'm like, yeah, of course I'm gonna watch this. Like, how do you not watch this? And then watching it and getting. I'm just getting, you know, way more upset with what they were saying. It kind of felt like I was watching like a Bruins playoff game where I'm like so emotionally <laughs> invested. Where I'm like, you fuck, you fucking bitch. <laughs> we had like group chats going with people being like, this fucking bitch. Like, it was just one of the most like intense things I've watched. Yeah. It, it was just intense knowing that like all they're doing is spewing, you know, bullshit while yeah. the entire city is like, dude, that's not true. We were there. Right. We it happened. Like, you, what are you talking about? Yeah, but my girlfriend keeps bringing up the fact that like 
she just keeps going back to last year's like voter turnout, how it was so low. And how she's like, I really wish that everybody was as focused on it then because, you know, things possibly could be a little bit different, which sucks. Right. But you know, going forward, like, okay, don't forget what we're going through right now. Next time it is. Yeah. Going. And that's, that's, that's sort of like where I can come in on this is that I know a lot about this stuff and I've been following it for a long time. And with Wisteria all these years, I did my best to make it not boring. Yeah. Uh, and you're, you're really fighting the tide at a certain point because, yes, the process of creating a budget is wicked, wicked boring. It's, it's the <laughs> worst. Uh, but now we have people like are, are actually invested in like kind of like understanding like the power in budgeting and like what can be done with it. And we have people that are actually like sort of like invested and they have a reason to care now. Like there's like a, a really good in to getting involved with this stuff. And now with like the proverbial leash off, I can just like continue to make the case that like, this is important. This is why you should care. And I don't have to worry about sounding like a, like a newsman, you know, like <laughs> the council discussed serious matters yesterday evening. <laughs> you know, like, I can just like, like be like, Hey, you guys should be really paying attention to this because this is why it matters. And this is why I personally feel like it matters. And I think that that's going to get, I don't know, uh, hopefully um, get more, more people involved in this and like in, interested in picking up the cause. And yeah. like, if we could really start to, to level some pressure on, on city hall, um, that would be nice. That would be How nice. Many would that be to live in a community that feels like the community has a voice and the city hall's being listened to? Both. Yeah. They're listening to us instead of the other way around. Yeah, like how, how nice would it be to live, have a city council that doesn't actively hate you, you know? <laughs> really? <laughs> it's really good. Thank you entirely. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't delete your comments and try to paint it as a... Yeah. Fuckers. Right, right. Like Worcester City Hall could, like, is basically just like, a, they're, like, you peel back, like, sort of like the, the, the liberal leanings and the democratic party posturing and all that and they're just sort of like a tax break vending machine like th that's like basically what they're focused on doing is just like convincing businesses to come here by giving them tax breaks and that is you know why is that how we're using our city hall well, we could use yeah. our city hall different and so if you start to make you can like the the bringing people in on the defund campaign and then sort of like expanding people's political consciousness about like what can actually be accomplished with the mechanism of power in city hall and, and how, um, and how it works and, and all of that and, and get people like more aware. I think that we'll see a higher voter turnout, hopefully, it, but, but we need candidates. And I was saying like, uh, this isn't something that I would ever do, but like, Actually, no, I would do it as a stunt. I do the publicity stunt, but like a city council campaign, if you if you launched it right now, even though it's not till 2021, and you were like, I am the defund the police yeah. candidate. And wow. then you like sort of like take up the leadership role mantle of like the like giving the, the whole movement to do this like a, a figurehead, then um, you're gonna get a lot more uh, legs out of it and pressure out of it um no one has done that yet that Even I, like, I personally think it's a good idea there's one person that i but also of. i'm not i'm sorry you, oh yeah there's one person that, I can think of that can do it i don't know if she's willing to do it i know that she's active in the defund um i'm not gonna name names i'm gonna just yeah, put this yeah, sure, her, sure. thinking that she might listen to this and i think it would be a fantastic idea because i know she's considering it that like she's considered running in the past and I, I could see that being very effective. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I hope somebody hears this and goes, oh, that's a good idea. I'll do that. Um, because, like, now is definitely the time that, like, there's a really good case to be made that city politics matter a whole lot. Uh, you know, the cops get what they want. They get weapons of war without a second thought. And teachers have to buy their own supplies. And now people are actually thinking, like, huh, why is that? wait why you know why why do we have so many cops why know? do we have cops in riot gear and our healthcare workers are strapping plastic to their face to prevent them yeah from 
Right. Why do we have cops in schools and like almost no social workers at all? Like, the, right. like social workers in Western public schools. And I should actually write about this because I haven't yet, but their caseloads are like 900 students, you know, like it's like they they just don't, they can't do anything. Um, and yet we, we pay almost a million dollars a year for cops in schools. It's like, 820,000, I think, uh, to police officers in schools. And that whole push is going nowhere fast because you, you think the city council's bad? If you were yelling at the city council like a Bruins game, whoa, the school would be so much worse. Oh, they're, they're monsters. They're, they're just cretins. There's, like, there's, there's a couple of good people on the, on the school committee, but uh, not enough to have a majority. <laughs> Most of them are ugh, ugh, horrible. <laughs> uh, we've put in a solid 45, 50 minutes on this. Um, Bill, I can absolutely see us having you back on sometime and to hear how you're progressing and awesome, yeah. what other things we should be bullshit pissed about. Hell yeah. Sounds a lot good. of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to continue to make, make the case of, uh, uh, make the case, you know, this is what you should be, this is what you're pissed about in Worcester. <laughs> I'm the piss <laughs> guy. <laughs> uh, people want to jump on. How do they find your? I hope the Zoom audio doesn't catch that wrong. I'm not the piss guy. I'm the piss <laughs> guy. Okay. Depending on who you ask. I don't want that to get lost in translation. I want to be very clear about this. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. That's awesome. I'm such an idiot. Thank you so no, much love- for having me. On. Uh, <laughs> thank you so 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 much. This is a blast. I'll come on whenever whenever you guys want to have me back. Fuck yeah. Um. So before we do a quick like goodbye, whatever. Um, for Worcester sucks and I love it. Are you gonna make other like uh, like social media channels just for that, or is everything gonna be run through your personal stuff? I th- I think I'm gonna run it through my personal stuff until okay. there, because what I what I don't want to have happen is like try to manage an Instagram or a, a Twitter that has like less of a following than my own. But if it, if it comes to the point where there's um, where there's enough demand for it, then I will definitely do that. But I, I think for now, it's just going to be like the, the Bill Shaner show. And it's like, you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, and I'll just be sharing my stuff through that cool. and see how that goes. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's most effective. Most of it's going to happen on Twitter. Substack is a very Twitter thing. Yeah. Um, and so that's like where I'll probably keep most of it. And I don't have to spam my uncles on facebook too much um <laughs> we're a pretty pro twitter podcast so yeah yes yeah 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 um so so yeah no. yeah so you can That's just awesome. find it at uh billshaner.substack.com and if you just go to my twitter that you'll see many links to it so Sweet. That's the, yeah well thanks so much guys appreciate it awesome thank, thank you, you man <laughs> um but yeah no i was excited for this interview i thought it would really really well i'm not surprised that it went really really well bill's awesome passionate which is very obvious which is great that's all you can ask for so i'm personally really excited to have his work delivered straight to my inbox every morning it's also like the future of of everything like magazine or newspapers and all that crap are dying like we talked about you can't go on telegram.com without getting blasted with ads which is wicked annoying so you just pay for a subscription-based model and you can get what you want. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly, I mean, that's truly how you keep it fair and unbalanced is like you said, once you start having advertisers and it's shit that you and I have talked about with this show. Like, yeah, that's true. we have interest in bringing advertising money and that's, that's the way a media company like us actually makes fucking money. But yeah. to do it, we don't ever want to be become beholden to our, to our sponsors and like we want, to our listeners to maintain a certain immense, a certain amount of honesty where once you start, once you start doing things for money, you kind of change the perspective. It's true. Sweet. So that was awesome. Um, thank you, Bill. Yeah. Thanks Bill for coming on and, and giving us the insight into the last couple of days of your life. have <laughs> been going on. I've been losing faith in Worcester magazine since the big layoff, what, two years ago, I think is what he said. Yeah. Um, and again, 
like we said in the interview, there is still a need for an alt magazine or an alt press in this city. But as we continue to devolve our current media state, like the way Bill's going is the way most things are going to go. It's yeah. like the Netflix model for pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, my bad. Um, in the interview, I think I said that Bill was the only person I knew that still worked at Worcester Magazine. Sorry, Sarah. I definitely know Sarah. <laughs> oh, I mean, Sarah and Bill were the only two people I knew, and now it's only Sarah. If she still works there, actually. I don't, I don't think know. she's full time there. I think she's a contractor. Okay. Sarah Canal Sanders? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think she's doing contract work, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay. I don't know. That's our friend. I thought about that after. I was like, I definitely know. Like, Sarah works there or did. I, I should, I'll, I'll ask her. But. I think she's freelance because she's, a, she writes for a bunch of different publications. Yeah. She's but yeah. a freaking beast. Um, yeah. Bill killed it. I'm excited that it's going to be mostly Twitter based. Hashtag pro Twitter life. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. It's it's definitely interesting. I haven't subscribed yet, but I will. Um, if I'm being 100% honest, I was gonna. I wanted to make sure that what he was gonna be offering was kind of like what we talked about, not the left leaning version of Turtle Boy. Basically, I don't want. Oh. I, if I know that he's gonna take the time to get the facts right, to, even though it's opinion based, if he's presenting me opinion based on actual facts that I can go. Um, you know, verify myself. Absolutely. Yeah. I want people to make it easy for me <laughs> to get my information. And if he's going to collect it and I can trust him, I will absolutely, it's worth the money to me. That's valuable. Yeah. That's good. I'm excited. I'm excited to get some, some real Worcester news, you know, we good. Yeah. It's gonna It'll be, be good. So everybody that listens to us, go consider giving Bill some money. If he uh, tickles your fancy. Sure. You guys should get educated and 69 is the best number in the world. So buy it for a year. Yeah, seriously. Unless you're really, uh, if you got fuck you money, then hit him with that 420. Hit him with, I was going to hit him with 420. <laughs> you, know, you know how pro 420 I am. Oh, dude. That, yeah. We can talk about something after. <laughs> Those fucking cookies. God. Dude, I was going to say, I, Friday night I like had like a good, decent chunk of the cookie and I was just playing video games. I watched uh, Can't Hardly Wait, right? Yeah. You know, like, 90s, like, teen movie thing? I watched that, and it was fine. And then I watched some movie on Netflix with the three dudes from, um, what's it called? Workaholics. Oh, I think Sarah, I think Sarah's watched that movie. I, I thought it was so stupid. Those guys are, I don't like the humor that's, like, that anxiety humor where it's just like awkward humor rather, where it's yeah. just like guys doing dumb things in weird situations. That gives I do. anxiety. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. I can't watch that stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I do like it. I, I do like them. I thought that show was hilarious. And like pretty much, you know, some of the things they've done outside of that, I thought were really funny. So I thought this was going to be great and it was not great at all. So don't watch that. That's not my poke, but it's pretty close. <laughs> well, if it's pretty close, then it might as well be time to rip into this. And it's been a week, so hit us with that good, good, Solon. Yeah. Yeah, it's been one week since you stoked and poked. Stokes and pokes. Awesome. Um, do you want to start us off this week if you already have your stuff in mind? Sure. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so my poke um, is going to be – all right. <laughs> so my poke is the – rollout of Polar's summer flavors that they released last week. Um, I have zero faith in Polar when it comes to marketing anything because they've shown nonstop that they don't know how to do that. They make really great products and it sells itself. And I understand that. But if you think about all the fun things you could do with, um, I don't know, a marketing budget, a design team, and however many thousands of followers they have on their social media platforms, you could have some real fun and people wouldn't even know what LaCroix was. Instead, Polar does the absolute opposite of that. Um, I forget what, it was Wednesday because we were printing at the shop and I just like pop on Instagram in between counting shirts and I look and I see the new flavors are up. And I'm like, oh, what? I, so first of all, like I'm really excited. Coconut 
is like my jam. So coconut limeade, I'm really, really, really pumped to drink that. Pineapple, like whatever. I'll get some and I'll try it, but I'm not dying to get it. But they, so not only did they like not make an official post about it, but all they did was they put in their Instagram story, like the coconut thing, they put the pineapple thing, and then they put them together with no information. All it said was new, and then it tagged seltzer aid. And I was like, okay. So I clicked on the seltzer aid handle to go to that Instagram, which they don't use. They literally don't post on it. They didn't post, they haven't posted on it since 2018. It only has like 1,300. Like we have more followers than that thing. It has like 1,300 followers. It's stupid. So I was like, okay, like I get it. If they're trying to grow that handle, like that makes a lot of sense. It's still very strange that they're trying to do that, but like whatever, not my problem. Um, But there was no information on that either. They posted the new flavors with like a different graphic, which was, and they're still really nice. Like the graphics are great. I love their graphics. I love their color choice. Yeah, it's awesome. And like everything about it was was great, except the fact that they still didn't let you know if it was out yet or not. It was just like hashtag, or like we put the lime in the coconut, hashtag pineapple, hashtag blah, blah. And I'm like, this is not how you do that. Like you, you should at least say like out now or like coming July, 2020 or whatever. Like coming what the soon. fuck? <laughs> Any type of, yeah, I'm all for building buzz. I think buzz is in itself me, very strong. Me too. Me too. And that, That's so right. I like, yes. So I like, of course, lost my mind. Um, and I was like, why do they do that? Like, I took it as like a personal attack. Cause I'm like, how do you not know how to do this? Like you guys have been doing this forever. And I know that like, I don't own a seltzer company and I'm not saying that I know everything in the world. Cause I sure as fuck don't, but it's pretty easy to see how you should be rolling this out to build buzz. It's not hard at all. And they just, they don't do that. They don't get it. They don't, they never do it. They don't even post about like their new flavors until they're already out, but you're not sure if they're out or if they're coming out or how to get them or where you can get them. Like there's zero information, which is completely insane. It's nuts. And it gets me so mad because I'm like, what the F? So then, so I was like, all right, whatever. So I like screenshot it. I posted the coconut one on Seltzer Times account, which like, we po- I post that stuff all the time. Post it, and then I'm getting DMs on where they can get it. Is it out yet? When did it come out? How do you get it? And I'm like, I don't know. There's no information on anything. Like, also, I do not work for Polar. Just We're because not I- Polar. <laughs> yeah, like, just because I posted something doesn't mean I have any information. And I get that, like, it makes more sense to ask me because I'm going to answer you, unlike Polar. And... <laughs> I'll probably know where to get it and I will tell you where to get it as soon as I know, unlike Polar. It just drives me fucking insane. Like, come on, guys. You gotta do... How do you mess this up? As always, we want to help you guys. We want to be as super supportive. But help us as consumers, as your clients, as your fucking customer base. Stop us hanging with just this poor information. Or even if you just wrote, out now, I would know to start looking for it. And then Strader messaged me and he was like, yo, it's already at Whole Foods. Is it Whole Foods or, or uh, Wegmans or something? One of those spots has it, has the coconut one. And I was like, okay, cool, thanks. But I have no idea, when did this come out? Like, so we have a cell was- network is how we learn things. Dude, for real. So yeah, so my poke is polar. Um, I know you're not going to listen to this and I know you don't care, but you know, a little marketing might actually change the game a little bit. A little more. Um, yeah, yeah. My stoke happened the same night, literally within minutes. I'm pretty sure Jess and Danielle were like, what is wrong with this kid? Because I went from like having a full on like mental breakdown about how annoying Polar is when it comes to everything to then having like getting so excited about Spotify. All right, I'm a massive Spotify guy. It's the only thing I listen to music on. I'm obsessed with it. They've made a lot of moves in the podcasting world, which obviously I pay very close attention to for millions of reasons, mostly because I listen to the podcast all day and we have one. Um, <laughs> right. so it's like, yeah. So it's interesting to me to watch like where that world's going. Spotify has made huge moves in the last like year plus um, acquiring the ringer. They acquired Obama's media company. They've acquired 
something else that was pretty big, but they've acquired like Spotify, um, or they've acquired like podcasting platforms and, and stuff like that. They're really, really leaning into podcasting, which makes a lot of sense. Um, they still haven't emailed us, which I think is really weird. I thought we were going to be the next acquisition, but guess what? We weren't. So they acquired Joe Rogan like a month ago. It changed the entire landscaping landscape of podcasting. It's insanity what that actually means. Also, fuck Joe Rogan. But still, if you just look at it as a brand, it's a massive thing. Then on Wednesday night, they announced they have acquired a partnership with Kim Kardashian, who like, I don't care about Kim Kardashian. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'll listen to it because I want to know. And also the idea of what she's going to talk about is actually like really interesting to me. She's huge in the like, uh, like prison reform and like social justice and all that stuff. She's like, she really is doing amazing work and I do not like her at all. She's annoying to me, but that's amazing. And like, nobody can take that away from her. And it sounds like this podcast with her, it's, I think it's going to be a co-host thing, but I, I have, can't really tell, but it sounds like she's going to be focusing on prison reform and stuff like that, which I think is really impressive. She's the most famous person in the world. Like she also doesn't have a podcast. So like Spotify made a move that was so big just by getting her involved. That's a massive, 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 massive move. But also you're getting the most famous person on the fucking planet to start a podcast that nobody's heard before and they have to have your platform to get it. It's genius. I yeah. then got so many DMs of people being like, what is she going to talk about? Why do you care about Kim Kardashian? I hate her. I hate her. I'm like, yo, it doesn't matter. It's not about whether you like Kim Kardashian or not. It's about this is such a massive move for Spotify. That's it's so insane. For the media, like for podcasts in general. Well, they're also Spotify – tried rolling out video a couple years ago and it didn't work that well for them. They've changed it. They've acquired more companies and these will definitely be video based podcasts. Logan is a video podcast. Yeah. So you're looking at next year being like the best year ever that Spotify's ever had, but it's just a complete game changer all, all around. But then the next day or two days, yeah, I think it was the next day or two days later, they announce a partnership with DC Comics. And they'll be doing a bunch of original content based around that. So now you've got... So that's Warner you know, Brothers. Yeah, oh yeah, it's Warner Brothers DC. But like, I mean, Matt, that's just, that's insane. It's totally insane. Yeah. I can't even get around how excited I am about like just the news of that stuff. Like it's all I want to talk about. Warner Brothers, even like as a company, has been interesting to me because they acquired um, through a subsidiary. A subsidiary, um, I watch a, a content creation group called Rooster Teeth out of Austin, Texas, and they've been making internet con uh, content for years. They are technically owned by Warner Brothers, so oh. they have like they just released a partnership with um, Batman, and they did a bunch of Batman merch because Warner Brothers owns DC, so they had rights to run the Batman art I, I i both like and and question these types of big uh they're not technically a monopoly be an oligopoly oligopoly because they're they're or like anyway i'm intrigued in the sense that it pushes this content further it further validates the content i'm afraid that it's going to drown out independent creators but much like what we just talked about with bill if there is niches or whatever gaps in content, it's going to be up to independent people like us to fill those gaps. And then potentially there's more audience to be had. I want nothing more than everybody to kill their televisions and kill cable and then move towards supporting independent creators. Like that would be an amazing world to live in. Granted, there's going to be so much competition that you're never really going to know, but how much fun is that? That means you're always going to be able to find something new. Yeah. I mean, so like we don't have cable. We'll never have cable, but I am a gigantic sports fan. And the idea of basketball playoffs and hockey playoffs coming back at the same time, and they're going to be in the same cities. 
So like they're going to be games on all day. Like that's like, I, they haven't announced any of that stuff, but like, that's what I started thinking about. And then with the baseball is probably not coming back, but like the potential of baseball possibly coming back, it got me thinking like, how can I watch this stuff going forward? Because we're going to end up shutting down the country again. And if I can still watch the, like, I want to watch the room. Like that's going to be fucking awesome. So I tweeted out the other day about YouTube TV. I heard an ad for it during a podcast I was listening to. And I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of interesting. And like YouTube TV did a huge push a couple of years ago. I think it was 2018 during the world series. And there was a lot of YouTube, YouTube TV ads. And then I never needed it. Like I didn't care, but then I started thinking about it and like, well, if I can just pay whatever at like 60 bucks a month or I, don't, I have no clue how much YouTube, YouTube TV costs. I have no idea, but no matter what, it's going to be cheaper than buying cable. Right. And so I tweeted out, I was like, yo, can I watch sports on this? And like YouTube TV tweeted me back like right away. Like, Hey, this is a great question. We get this all the time. Yes, you can. You'll be able to watch whatever, whatever. And I was like, oh, dope. Then one of my friends, her brother tweeted at me. It was like, dude, we cut cable like two years ago. Um, we have YouTube TV and I can watch, I watch everything. It's got MLB network, Nesson, like all the channels I would want. He's like, the only thing you don't get is NFL TV and red zone. And I was like, I don't care at all. Football, not a priority of mine one bit. Plus you can still watch the games. I just can't watch like red zone, which I don't fucking care about. But I gave up red zone when I gave up fantasy sports. Yeah. I don't even even do fantasy sports. So it's like, it means nothing to me, but so that alone, I was like, all right, I got to do this. And then uh, Lifer tweeted at me. It was like, hey, I have YouTube TV and I watch all the Bruins games on it. It's awesome. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm doing this. So I like the idea of doing something like that where it's like, like I understand it's, they're not, I'm not watching. I don't watch a lot of like small creators anyway. Like I don't, but the stuff I watch on YouTube is like interviews and like band stuff. Like I guess technically they're small creators, but I would still watch that. I just like, I can't, I want to watch the Bruins. Like, you know what I mean? I don't watch a lot of like TV series and stuff like that. So I don't know. It just gets me the idea of Spotify. There needed to be one of these major companies and like one of these major streaming platforms leaning way into podcasting. Who is going to be the first one? I'm really pumped that Spotify and that it's not a title or Apple music or like something that I don't use or care about because I don't, I just don't give a fuck. I love Spotify. I've always loved Spotify. So the idea that they're the ones who are like being super smart and throwing a bunch of money at podcasting gets me really excited. And you can't also like, you have to make a splash. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't do you any good to get a C D E list podcast. Like you have to, if you're going to be the spot, And if you, like, they clearly know that they're going to go video. They clearly know what they're doing. They're not morons. They went out and got the biggest podcast in the world. And then you got the most famous person in the world to start a podcast. While you also, I mean, you acquired the ringer. So you have all the sports stuff. Like they have everything. Like they're, it's so smart. And to me, it seems like they're trying to be the spot for podcasts, like you just said. And like right now, Apple Podcasts is the most widely used from our research like people yes or they're going through youtube where yeah. if you have a platform like spotify where it's free to access you get more content if you pay to use it and um you actually get video maybe that's a thing you can only get audio for free but if you want the video you have to pay like i can absolutely see that that paywall come into place and that just makes fucking that much more sense and then again so, you have one platform that everybody can use easily I too, I do support a lot of independent creators. Like I love independent small time creators. They just offer me something that I can't find other way. Oh yeah. But to try to find those creators is so insanely difficult. And like to really discover them, even local music, like you can't just go and type into SoundCloud, find me bands in Worcester. Like I have to go and find this dude's page and like go through all his friends and see if he's following anybody interesting and go, so having Spotify to do some of that, like finding work for you and then developing a platform that's super usable. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That's brilliant. That's smart. I think it's great. I'm just so excited about that type of stuff. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to poke the Kelly Kotex. 
which is currently the best name I've heard for the revised Kelly Square. Uh, so my poke is we need to come up with something better than the Kelly Peanut, Kelly Square, or else we're going to get fucking stuck with Kelly Kotex, which has a subtle ring to it. And it's pretty descriptive as the shape of the double merged intersection or the double uh, rotary. But yeah. Come on. come on, dudes. We need a better name than Kelly Kotex. I don't know. I think like the whole, so like it's always going to be Kelly Square. That's the name. You think you know so? What I mean? think people are still going to call it Kelly Square even. I don't know. Because like, I feel like people are going to Kelly Square was the five way intersection with just stop signs. Like, this is something else. I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know. I mean, that's what it is. It's always going to be Kelly Square. Just like the, like, people are going to have a nickname for everything. It's like the fucking Woo Sox thing where everybody was like, the minute they got announced, you knew they were going to be the Worcester Red Sox. That instantly was broken down into Woo Sox, which like, we all know how I feel about Woo. I think it's stupid. But Woo! then they ran this weird promotion where it was like, come up with our nickname. It's like, no, no, no. You, that's not how a nickname works. Like a nickname is given, you, like, you have to earn it, it's given to you and it sticks and then that's it. The like, the idea of like, hey, like let's name this something is just so woo. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's very like forced and like watered down and All said. white bread as fuck. Like I hate that. I, I, when I worked at Starbucks, I used to give, uh, I'd give like random people I worked with nicknames and they were based off of nothing. Like, I worked with this girl, Kim, who I called PRK for Pink Ranger Kim because she was the only person named Kim that I knew. And when I was younger, there was Kim, the, ra- the Pink Ranger. Power so range. it was like, yeah. here's PRK. I still call her PRK. She's like, my phone is fucking PRK. Like, I made up nicknames for all kinds of dumb stuff. Like, you have no idea. Like, but then there was a couple people who were like, I want a nickname. And I'm like, well, I can't give you one. It like, has to just happen. Otherwise, it's like not like legit yeah so it's like yeah the kelly square thing like the kelly cotex thing like that's funny but like that might have to be it because that is such like an organic like funny thing that wasn't like there was no like call to action for it it just happened fair i'm so otherwise i hate hate it they make me nuts um and the thing that I am stoked about is like what I just referenced is I do support uh, independent creators, although I don't think this channel is independent. They're kind of funded. Um, but I've been watching these polyphonic videos, which they did a deep dive on Rage Against the Machine. They've done deep dives on lots of different random music. They do basically do essays, visual essays on music. Um, they did that one on Aesop Rock that I sent you last week. Yep. Um, I don't know if you watched that, but it's Not yet. <laughs> so fucking good. Anyway. Uh, from that, I started taking deep dives and I found this super awesome. So after I watched 846 the other night, I watched a documentary, which is narrated by Tim Armstrong of Rancid, Operation IV, Transplants, everything else he's done. Um, and it's all about two-tone ska and it's about the, the, how it got started and how it's basically not affected so much as just permeated culture even nowadays. And like you start with the British bands, like the specials and how like, they brought in a bunch of people from Jamaica to England to help them rebuild after World War II. So you had this infusion of, of Jamaican culture mixed in with these, this English punk aspect. And that's where this, this new version of ska came from because you had exactly what we need to be doing as a culture a mixing of, of different people and different ideas and different backgrounds to create something new. Yeah. And the specials were well ahead of their time. Like they were, commenting on race and commenting on police brutality and life's gonna shit even back this is like the 60s the 70s 60s um and then you have bands like the english definitely, Beatles. definitely in the 70s i don't know yeah i don't know if they were a band in the 60s they might be i don't know enough about the specials but um so yeah so you, and then you have like bands like english beat and then it shows this documentary shows how they progressed to bands like operation ivy um and then again to like bands like the aquabats and yo gabba gabba and if people don't know what yo gabba gabba is hi you're probably too old but uh it was a kid's show made by the lead singer of the aquabats for his kids because he was singing song to his kids and he thought all the other sh- kids shows were lame so he made his own and now this this has like Jimmy World plays a song for kids, uh, the Agrolites, all these awesome bands. And it's a show that was on Nickelodeon Jr. 
And then after they, the documentary, it's something like 36 minutes, but they cover all this culture and all this like awesome bands. They go worldwide and find like there's bands in Japan, there's bands in Norway, there's a band in Mexico, all playing music inspired by two-tone ska, but it's just like a progression. And then they're bringing in their local influences. So like the Mexican version, it's insane. It's so like real horn heavy and real bouncy. This I can't remember the band that they followed, but they showed one of their live concerts. And there's like a million fucking people all bouncing up and down to this like six piece, eight piece uh, ska band. And That's it's awesome. just so wonderful. Like you want to be there dancing because it's just fun. <laughs> so yeah. I, love ska. So, yeah. I will be watching for sure. Noisy. N-O-I-S-E-Y. Um, they did three. I have to watch the other two. There's one in New York Hardcore and there's one on um, Krautrock. But uh, yeah, super interested. And again, we keep talking about how we miss live music. So this has been the thing that's kind of scratched my itch of like. Yeah, live music is fucked. <laughs> They're doing Live Nation, fuck Live Nation. Um, but Live Nation this morning announced like a drive-in concert tour. So like bands will play at drive-ins so you can like pull up and watch them play. And it's like Brad Paisley's doing some, uh, who the heck was it? Nelly. I was like, fuck. And who was the other one? There was another, there was like three artists that were announced for this, this thing they're going to do. I don't remember who the other one was, but fuck Lab Nation. Seriously. I like, I don't, the thing, the thing with like everything kind of being broken right now is like now's the time to rebuild stuff the way it should be done. You don't need Live Nation. Like I understand that I'm not, I'm not trying to sit here and be like, you don't need this shit. Like, I, but like you literally don't need Live Nation. It's 2020. Like, okay, you want to go on tour? Fine. So you can't play House of Blues, but play, play there's other independent venues. Like, I mean, granted, there won't be a lot of them after coronavirus, but like there's ways around this. Like, yeah, the money's not there, but like maybe you just scale back on the light show and like all that crazy stuff and you scale back enough to the point where it's like, about the music. Okay, we're just going to fucking play music again. And then you rebuild the way concerts are done. Like, I don't know. It's a radical idea, I guess, but it's kind of not. Like and Newfound you- Glory streamed a show saturday or friday or something i forget what day. i think it was friday night um i didn't get i didn't watch it i kind of wish i did but i got caught up and stuff but like the the whole premise of that was like 15 bucks and you stream it from home and it's like yeah it's not the same as being at a show but like you can't go to shows right now i like if i wasn't busy i would have paid 15 dollars to watch them play and they played for three straight hours so it's like hey you've got to do different stuff like you can't play for an hour and expect anybody to give a shit Sturgill Simpson streamed a free show on YouTube a couple like a month a couple weeks ago, month ago, something like that. Um, from the Ryman. And like it was cool. It was awesome. I watched the second half of that. It was great. Do stuff like that. Come up with limited merch and make your money that way. And then when we can tour again, play non Live Nation venues. Fuck Live Nation. All right. That seems like a good enough place to end. <laughs> I can talk about how much I hate Live Nation for the next three hours. Maybe we'll we'll do a whole other episode on that one because I sent Ricky a text message the other day that said, "Hey, remember that class action lawsuit that we all got free tickets?" But we're oh, we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna end that one there. Uh, if you want to find us on the internet, go to SeltzerTime.com. I've been Travis. You can find me on the internet at Hunchback Travis. I've been Ricky. You can find me at DickChuck77 <laughs> or Seltzer Time Official. Thank you very much for listening. Bye, guys.